See, the moment you try to stop doing something, you are testifying that the work isn't finished. You don't stop smoking by trying to stop smoking. You don't stop drinking by trying to stop drinking. You stop smoking, you stop drinking by declaring who you are in Christ. By, keep, by continuing to look at the finished work and say what the word shows you is true about you. Are you getting it, my brother? Internationally recognized for teaching and preaching the uncompromised word of God, Bishop Clarence E. McClendon answers the prophetic and apostolic call upon his life by ministering the healing grace and miracle anointing of Jesus Christ around the world. By his preaching and teaching the uncompromised gospel of Jesus Christ, Bishop McClendon the teacher, the preacher, the apostle, and an anointed prophet sent to the nations, being used by the power of the Holy Spirit, has led to the healing and deliverance of millions around the world during his healing crusades and conferences. If you want to experience another level of worship, witness the healing power of Jesus, learn the uncompromised Word of God, confirmed by notable miracles, then we invite you to partake in the overwhelming power of the Holy Spirit by the moving of God's transforming grace. Whenever you see the scripture talk about what you and I have in him, or it says, in Christ you are this, in him you are that, in him you are this, what is being told you, and I'd write this down if I were you, what is being told to you there is how you are being seen by the Father in his eyes. In other words, whatever it is saying, about Christ, it's saying because you are with Christ, you have been given this status by grace, and this is how the Father is seeing you. Do you get it? Do you get it? So when, when it says, in him you have this, in him you have that, we'll get to a couple of them in just a moment. What it's saying is, in the Father's eyes, this is you already without meriting it. In the Father's eyes, this is you already without you performing for it. Now this, children, is the key to transformation. The key to transformation in the kingdom. See, this is one of the things that is new. This is one of the new principles of the new creation. The key to changing your life is not changing your life. I'm going to say it again. The key to changing your life is not changing your life. It is accepting and receiving the life that you were given in him and saying so. <laughs> Whew. Did you hear what I just said? Oh, I'll get to that more later. So watch this. Uh, uh, I, I took you here also. Go to John 3. Mm. Go to John 3. Now I want you to stay with me here because I'm not going to read all this. I've read it for a couple of weeks. You remember Jesus has been come to by Nicodemus Nicodemus says, you know, we know you're a teacher coming from God. No man can do the miracles you do except God be with him. And Jesus just busts out into this uh, declaration about being born again or born from above. And remember in verse 3, it says, Jesus answered and said to him, most surely I say to you, unless one is born again or literally born from above, he cannot see. Everybody say, he cannot see. Say it again, he cannot see. Okay, so unless one is born again or born from above, he cannot see the kingdom of God. So again, the born from above experience is to first give you the ability to see the things that are above, the things from above, the principles from 
above. Now, stay right there and, and remember what Paul just said over in the book of Ephesians. He says, now that I've heard of your faith in the Lord Jesus Christ, I'm praying that the eyes of your understanding be enlightened. Who is it? I'm praying now that you can see. Because now that you've been born from above, I'm praying now that you see what has actually happened in you and for you in Christ Jesus. So the first element of the born from above experience is seeing. Now go again. Uh, Nicodemus said, verse 4, how can a man be born again when he is old? Can he enter a second time into his mother's womb and be born? Jesus answered, surely I say, unless one is born of water, again, that's natural, and spirit, that's spiritual, he cannot enter the kingdom of God. That which is born of the flesh is flesh. He's talking now about the original creation. That which is born of the spirit is spirit. He's talking now about the new creation. Do you see it? Do you see it? Which is why I said last week being born again is not really again. It's being born for the first time in the right dimension. In the dimension you were created to live in because you are spirit like God. Hallelujah. And so did you get that? So now watch this. So again, verse 3, except a man be born from above, he cannot see. Verse 5, unless one is born of water and spirit, he cannot enter. So again, the principle is you are born from above so that you can see, and once you can see, you can enter. And the way you enter is by accepting and knowing what you have seen or been shown by the Spirit of God and putting it to work. So further down in this same passage, verse number 13, Jesus says, No one has ascended to heaven, but he who came down from heaven, that is the Son of Man who is in heaven, and as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, even so must the Son of Man be lifted up. Now, I said this last week. Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness not to kill the serpent, but the serpent was lifted up. And again, that's Numbers 21, verses 4 through 9. The serpent was lifted up so that whoever looked would live. So the principle, he, Jesus said, as, the, as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, so must the Son of Man be lifted up. That is not a reference of him being lifted up just to be crucified. That is a reference of him being lifted up to be looked at. Lifted up so that you and I can see what God was doing in lifting him up. What God was doing when he died. What God was doing when he was buried, what God was doing when he raised him, what God was doing when he seated him. And here is what Jesus is saying. The more you look at that, the more life you'll begin to walk in. I just dropped a bomb of truth that the whole church needs to hear. The more you see that, the more you look at that, the more the Holy Spirit gives you revelation about that, the more eternal life will begin to manifest in you, through you, for you, and around you. Healing will spring up while you're meditating the scripture in your seat at the house. Prosperity will break forth as you're praying and meditating the word in the kitchen. Why? Because eternal life is working. Because now you've seen who you are, what God did, and you're learning how to work it. Are you seeing this? Are you seeing this? See, here's the thing, and the Spirit of the Lord said this to me. He said, eternal life manifesting is not solely a product of being born again, but it's a product of seeing what happened to you when you were born again. I'm going to say that again. And I'm going to show this to you in Scripture, and some things are going to open up to you. He said to me, eternal life manifesting. See, uh, eternal life manifesting is not merely a product of you and I being born again, although that is important or born from above. It is significant. It's first. But eternal life manifesting in and through your life is a product not just of being born again, but of seeing what happened when you were born again. Go to 2 Corinthians chapter 3 real quick. 2 Corinthians chapter 3. Are you getting this? I think you all are 
Y'all are tired of me teaching in this area, aren't you? You say, I got this, Bishop. Well, I mean, clearly the Lord thinks you need some more. Watch, 2 Corinthians 3. I'll begin at verse number one. Now watch this. Ah, watch this again. This is the same Paul who is writing in these other letters that we just read in Ephesians and, uh, uh, and the truths that we extracted there. Watch this now. He says, for if what is passing away was glorious, what remains is much more glorious. Therefore, since we have such hope, we use great boldness of speech. Now, wait a minute. Since we have, <laughs> stay with me. Since we have such hope of what? <laughs> Notice what he said. He said, for if what is passing away was glorious, what remains is much more glorious. Therefore, since we have such hope, we use great boldness of speech. Wait, wait, wait. Since we have such, such hope, what hope? Hope that what remains or what has been accomplished for us in Christ Jesus is more glorious than what passed away. Now, what passed away? You did. <laughs> you did. You, <laughs> you did. You died with him, so you passed away. Now, Adam Boreshton, here what we say. Here's what we have hope because we understand what God worked. We, we understand and we're hoping because this hope has been placed in us that what remains is more glorious than what passed away. Well, what remains? The new creation. Or who you and are, or who you and I are in Christ Jesus. Now, now get it. He said, and because we've caught on to this, we speak boldly. Ah, uh, ah, uh, that's why worldly people won't understand how you talk. That's why, and this has probably happened to you, if you're, tr if you're living a new creation reality, this has probably happened to you. You're saying something to someone, and, and, and you, you, you don't even want to say it because you know they're not going to get it. Y you know, they're, and they're going to look at you like, Oh, well, happened to me just this past week. Someone blessed their hearts, and, they, and again, they're, they're not born again. And you know, I was in a certain place, and you know, someone I've seen at a various place. Where I go, there, oh, it's good to see you. I haven't seen you in a while. You okay? You all right? Everything going good? You vaccinated everything? And again, nothing wrong with being vaccinated. So you're out and about. Everything, everything's good. And I'm like, oh God, I, I don't even want to go here. I'm gonna go. And so I said, well, you know, I, no, I'm not vaccinated. I don't need it. Now, again, if you need it, you get it. I'm, I'm, not, I'm, well, I'm not telling you to get it. I'm just saying you make up your mind what you do. Okay. But they look at me like, well, 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 well you, 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 I mean, you want to be safe, don't you? I'm, oh, I'm safe. As a matter of fact, you're as safe as you've been being here with me. See, boldness of speech. And the people say, well... You're arrogant. No, 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 no. No, I believe that what remains is more glorious than what died. Do you get it? Do, do you get it? And, and because I believe it, my speech is bold. <laughs> Hallelujah! Hallelujah! When you say, Bishop, well, how do I get so bold? Start talking it. See, you get bold in it the more you say it. You don't get bold and then say it. The boldness comes because you say it. And you say it in practice, in prayer. You there? I, I, was, I, was, I got a, a piece of information. Someone was talking about uh, this. And, and, and I, when I heard it, I said, oh, that's good. That applies to the spirit life. It, it, it says, the amateur in a thing practices so they won't make a mistake. The professional in a thing practices until they can't make a mistake. You didn't hear what I just said. See, the amateur in a thing practices so they won't make a mistake. 
be it basketball, music, whatever it is. They practice so they won't make a mistake. The professional practices until they can't make the mistake. Until they've got it down so that it's second nature. See, that's the difference between these nominal Christians and people who are actually walking in spiritual authority. They're meditating the word. They're practicing the word in prayer. They're saying it to the degree that when they are in the battle, it just comes out. Hallelujah! Glory to God. And that's what we're looking to manifest here at the Place of Grace Cosmopolitan Center. If you want to play church, this ain't the place. Glory to God. We are raising up new creations, walking in new creation power, who use great boldness of speech because not because we are trusting in ourselves. We believe that what remains is more glorious than what passed away. Hallelujah. Are, are you seeing it? Watch it, watch it, watch it, watch it. We are such bold. Watch this. Unlike Moses who put a veil over his face, so, robo standa, so that the children of Israel could not look steadily at the end of what was passing away. Now what Paul is doing is he is, he, he is, he is, he is revealing all these things in the old covenant. And he's saying all this was symbolic. Glory to God. Moses, he says, put a veil over his face when he came down out of the presence of God with the law, not just because he was shining, he was shining, but not that. He said because it was what he had was going to pass away. So the veil was not just because he was shining, it was because something was to come more glorious and God didn't want them looking at what was dying. And that's what Paul just said. It's not what Clarence said. He, he, he is reasoning from the old covenant to the new creation. Are you seeing it? Absolutely. Watch it. He said, unlike Moses who put a veil in his face, so the children of Israel could not look steadily at the end of what was passing away. What is he saying? God saying, I want you to stop looking at what passed away. I want you to stop looking at the old you. I want you to stop attributing who you were to who you are. And stop saying you're that because you're no longer that. So he says, I put a veil over it because it was going to die. Hallelujah! Watch it. But their minds were blinded. Huh. For until this same day, the same veil, remail, the same veil remains unlifted in the reading of the Old Testament. But the veil whoo, is taken away in the anointing. The veil is taken away in the anointed one and his, his anointed. The once, woo, once you connect with the anointed one and once that anointing starts working in you, the veil is taken away and you start seeing who you really are so you can start saying who you really are so you can start becoming who you really are. Watch. I need you to understand this. The new creation reality is constructed in you by the Holy Spirit when you speak the right words. It is built in you. The, watch, the image is built. The life is there, but the image is not built. Did you hear what I just said? See, when you become born above, born from above, the substance is there, but the picture has not yet been made. It would be like, This is why the Bible says we are being built up into a spiritual house. It would be like getting a pile of bricks, throwing them in a hole in the earth, and saying, that's a house. No, that's not a house. That's the substance out of which a house is going to be made. When you were born from above, the bricks were laid in you. But the Holy Spirit constructs the house. Out of the words you speak, your words empower him to start hammering. Start sawing. Start cutting, if you will, until the image of God is built in you. And then when it is, nobody can take it away from you. You say, 
Where are you getting this? I'm just ahead of my reading. Watch. 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 But the veil is taken away in Christ. Verse 15. But even to this day, when Moses, when the law is read, a veil lies on the heart. Watch this. Nevertheless, when one turns to the Lord, the veil is taken away. Now the Lord is the Spirit. When one turns to the Spirit, when one turns to what the Spirit is constructing. Now remember what he just said. He said, we're using great boldness of speech, and our boldness of speech is empowering the Holy Spirit to build. And when we turn and look at what the Holy Spirit is building, watch. Now, the, when one turns to the Lord, the veil is taken away. Now the Lord is the Spirit, and where the Spirit is Lord is how it's actually written. Not where the Spirit of the Lord is. Where the Spirit is Lord, there's liberty. Now look at verse 18. But we all with unveiled face, why? Because we're new creations in the anointing. We get to look at it face to face. But we all with unveiled face, watch this, beholding as in a mirror the glory of the Lord are being transformed into the same image from one level of glory to the next level of glory just as by the Spirit of the Lord. The Spirit of the Lord is doing it and He's not doing it by my working. He's doing it by my looking. See, I'm not trying to change myself. I'm not trying to stop bad behavior. That means you don't have any? No, I got some, maybe from time to time, on occasion, a lot less. But get it! You say, what is it? That ain't your business. But watch this, now watch, what is it? <laughs> he, he says, he says, but we all with unveiled face, beholding as in a mirror the glory of the Lord, are being transformed. See, I am transformed while I look, not while I work. I am transformed while I look, and say what I see, not while I try to stop. See, the moment you try to stop doing something, you are testifying that the work isn't finished. You don't stop smoking by trying to stop smoking. You don't stop drinking by trying to stop drinking. You stop smoking, you stop drinking, by declaring who you are in Christ, by, keep, by continuing to look at the finished work and say what the Word shows you is true about you. Are you getting it, my brother? Are you getting it, my sister? And I know, see, I know it's contrary to religious teaching because religious teaching always begins from what you have to do. And, and the new creation reality always begins from what Christ has already done. I'm going to say that again. Religious teaching always begins with what you have to do. New creation reality always begins with what Christ has done. And the transformation is made by beholding and saying so. I was watching this, and it gets very interesting. When you start walking in new creation reality, and again, people are at different levels of glory, so I'm not, I'm not, you know, I'm not coming against anyone. But when you... When you come and you begin to understand new creation reality, you begin to understand on another level why the world is not paying much attention to us. Most of us. Because all they see us is selling a product that doesn't work. Do this, do this, do this, do this, do this, do this, and they do it and it doesn't work because the finished work of Christ Jesus doesn't begin with what you have to do. It begins with what he has done. And the Holy Spirit shows it to you. Are you still with me? I said, are you still with me? Whew! Watch this now. Let me, let me go from there here, and I'll, I'll just quit in a minute because I'm, I'm, I'm over time. Go to 1 John 5. Oh, is this glorious? Watch this. Go to 1 John 5. Oh, children. So that's why we've got to have a prophetic encounter because I need like just three or four days to teach. And I'll get into some of these things this week. 
Hallelujah. Because it, it kind of kind of felt like in the last several months, uh, all I have is one message. I just keep coming at it different ways and trying to get people into the truth of it. Look at 1 John 5. Oh, this is... Now, now, oh. I'm, I'm going to start at verse 10. <laughs> Watch this. This is extraordinary when you see it. For, uh, somebody said, Bishop, why do why you get so happy when you just teach it? Because it, it, this stuff is good. It's, it's, it's better than, uh, it's better than smothered chicken. 1 John 5. Verse 11, let me start at verse 10. Now watch this. He who believes in the Son of God has this witness. Again, the word there is evidence in himself. He who does not believe God has made him alive. He who does not believe God <laughs> has made him a liar. Well, now, what has God said? God said, I did this for you in Christ Jesus. I worked this for you in Christ Jesus. We're talking about faith in the operation of God. I accomplished this for you in what I did in Christ. Now, watch it. He who believes in the Son of God has this evidence in himself. What? All the evidence that God has accomplished and finished. He who does not believe God has made him a liar. Watch this. Because he has not believed the testimony that God has given of his son. Notice, it doesn't say, doesn't believe the testimony of his son. See this, no, you, I, I need your attention here. See, because there are a lot of people who believe the testimony of Jesus of what Jesus said. They'll quote it. They can quote you the red part of the Bible, the red letter edition. edition. They can quote all the things that Jesus said. They can. But, but, but he says here, he who does not believe God has made him a liar because he has not believed the testimony that God has given of his son, not to his son, of his son. The testimony that God has declared about what he worked for you and I in his son. Become a digital disciple of the gospel of Jesus Christ. The word teaches that great grace comes with the boldness of spreading the gospel. You can find our YouTube channel by simply typing in on your search engine and there on your screen, the message of grace and truth will be on demand. Will you have the boldness to subscribe and share? Be bold and share the message of the cross with your network.